Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Rick and Lisa. And on this week's video, we head up to Lubeck, Maine and cross over to Campello Island in New Brunswick, Canada. So come along. Come on. So, you ready to cross over into Canada? I'm ready to cross over into Canada. This has uh, been kind of a, one of our bucket list uh, things to do. Never, it is. Neither one of us has ever been to Canada. So we've got our passports. Passports. We've got our vaccination cards. Yes. So, and uh, we filled out all the questionnaires online. So hopefully they'll let us through. Hey, how are you folks Hey, doing? good morning. Well, that was pretty easy. I think we uh, made it through customs with no problems. So well done by Lisa getting all of our paperwork in order. We are in Canada. All right, Lisa, so why'd we come to Canada today? To visit Roosevelt's Campello Park. Yeah, so it's uh, one of the international parks that's part of the uh, park system, and it's jointly run by both Canada and the United States. So this should be interesting. I think this was uh, Roosevelt's summer home that he used to come to while he was in office, and it uh, looks like it'll be a great day trip. So Lisa, what's on the agenda for today? First we're going to watch a short film, then we're going to go get tea with Eleanor, and then we're going to take a tour through the cottage. Sounds great. All right. Back in the day, so I think we got to keep going this way to the Eleanor Tea. So we're done with tea. Now we're gonna head over to the main cottage and we're gonna do that tour next. Oh, so yeah. if it's if it's half as good as the tea with Eleanor, I think uh, we're in for a treat. Welcome to the Roosevelt Park. The International Park is the only one like it in the entire world. Uh, this right here is FDR's Summer Cottage. The reason it is considered a cottage is obviously not its grand size. Uh, the cottage was never insulated, so it's not suitable for winter use. Now we have a whole separate commission uh, for the park. So we are operated, uh, staffed and funded by both the US and Canadian federal governments. And we are very lucky to have such a beautiful park for you to come and enjoy. And I noticed already in the uh, pantry, they already have the martinis made up. Thank so the uh, martinis with uh, Franklin <laughs> is, is ready to go. We just got to convince, uh, yeah, convince the staff, the staff. to go ahead and, <laughs> go ahead and uh, kick it off. All right, so we just finished up the tour of the uh, cottage. And I guess my first question to uh, anybody watching this is what's your defini definition of a cottage because my idea of a cottage is a is a small home like a thousand square feet and this one here is 10,000 square feet so I'm not sure that really classifies it as a cottage what do you think no, no. Well, not American <laughs> definition of no a cottage. no but uh, it's a very interesting tour a lot of history and come to find out that the uh, this this cottage that's here behind us that is the Roosevelt cottage they didn't originally have this one built. Their cottage was the one next door that his parents, the Roosevelt's um, parents, Franklin FDR's parents built in the late 1800s. And then yes. they acquired this cottage. It uh, was a wedding present. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty nice wedding present. <laughs> and I guess back then, you know, all these wealthy families, this is before he was president, would all come up here in summer together and, uh, and spend their, their summer months up here on the uh, Campobello Island. Yeah, this is the Coons Cottage. Yeah, that they ended up purchasing uh, at a later time. But uh, really fascinating, a lot of history here. And I guess my takeaway is, um, I need to find some richer friends to hang out with <laughs> that, 
and have a cottage um, you know, with an ocean view and everything. So, but uh, no, we have our airstream. That's all we need. That's all we need. Yeah. yeah that's all we need. We so have, we have our house. So what's next on the agenda? Well, we're going to go have lunch over here at the little cafe. At Princess Cottage. Yes, at Princess Cottage at okay. the little cafe. And then we'll uh, continue touring the grounds. And yes. I think there's a, a lighthouse here on the island that we're going to hopefully try and see. Yes. And we've still got to. Uh, um, Tour the lighthouse on Lubbock. Yeah, we got to make our way back over to the U.S. and uh, we want to go over there and and see uh, the town of Lubbock as well as the the lighthouse that's over there. So let's go grab some lunch. Sounds good. I'm hungry. Yeah. All right, so I think we've uh, wrapped up our visit here at Roosevelt's Campello uh, Estate and his cottage. So uh, I think definitely well worth the day trip coming up here. Oh, definitely. I think we still have more to see, but we just don't have the time. Yeah, so we want to tour the island also. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and uh, and jump in the truck and we're going to go drive around the island, see what else is out here to explore. and. Uh, Enjoy the rest of our day here before we cross back over into Lubbock. Yes. You've never been very graceful at walking down a hill. I've never been that graceful. <laughs> now, it would have made for a good video to see you do a face plant, but... <laughs> All right, so we made it out here to Pollock Beach, and I think Lisa's going to do a little bit of hunting for some sea glass. So. For that couple said we could find things. Yeah. All right, so this is what it looks like when you walk on the beach looking for sea glass. Not, not too interesting. We haven't found any yet, but uh, hopefully we'll find at least one piece while we're out here. Yeah, so Lisa found a piece of glass, not quite sea glass. Yeah. Looks like beer bottle glass. <laughs> All right, so here's my theory on uh, sea glass, part two, okay? So I've already established my first theory that it's nothing more than just a bunch of busted up beer bottles. And my second theory is the reason why they tell the tourists to come out here and hunt for sea glass is it's the way they get them <laughs> to get free labor to clean up their beaches. So while we're out here looking for sea glass, the locals are getting their beaches cleaned up. <laughs> so I found the coveted green sea glass. Go present it to my wife and hopefully I will be in her good graces. You were always in my good Ooh, pretty green. You're always in my good graces, honey. All right. Are you ready to head back to the lighthouse and see if we can cross at uh, low tide? Sure. All right. So we gotta look for sea glass on the way. All right, we'll do that. All right, guys, so we made it back over here to the lighthouse and it's uh, just about low tide, so we'll be able to cross. Unfortunately, we didn't know that there is a $5 per person to cross over to the lighthouse and uh, they don't take credit cards. And, uh, you know, as, uh, as things would be, we only had $5 between the two of us. I had three, uh, $3 bills and Lisa had some coins. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross over to the lighthouse and Lisa's gonna wait here and take some photos, but uh, just a, a tip, if you come out here, make sure you bring some cash. It's $5 per person. So, uh, it's probably a good thing that Lisa didn't come over to see the lighthouse because she does have a fear of heights. And if you can see behind me here, she would have had to cross this bridge as well as there are several sets of stairs or ladders that uh, probably would have been a bit challenging for her, uh, let alone the uh, slippery rocks and the seaweed down below. So just uh, take that as a word of advice. If you decide to come out here, if you got a fear of heights, uh, that may be something you want to consider as well. All right, so made it across, as you can see, a beautiful lighthouse. So 
So even though Lisa wasn't able to come out here um, and see the lighthouse in person, definitely well worth uh, the $5. So if you're up in this area, highly recommend coming out here and visiting the lighthouse during low tide. It was beautiful over there, but it's probably a good idea that you didn't go. You don't have the right shoes on anyways. Well, I changed my shoes out on my hiking but, boots. Uh, Fantastic view, great looking white uh, lighthouse. Um, but my idea is, you know, to go along with the martinis with Franklin, put up a zip line and charge $10 a person to go across. <laughs> Good idea. That's a money making idea. All right, you ready to head back into Lubeck? Let's go into Lubeck. All right. Hello. You? I'm doing well. You mind taking your glasses off for a moment? Sure. Sure. Doesn't look like me though, does it? Yeah, you gotta raise it with you. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Please! <laughs> <laughs> She's been trying to get me to shave for uh, months now. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know it was gonna take a border crossing to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a dull pocket knife. Yeah. yeah. Look at there, you're gonna get yourself detained here at the border. <laughs> Alright, so... Continue on. Let's head out to the other lighthouse, and then we'll come back here into town and grab some dinner. They were repainting it. Oh, okay. It's the only time that they had blue stripes instead of red stripes. All right, Lisa, so what's the significance of this place? It's the easternmost point in the USA. Yes, it is. So we've now been to the easternmost and the most southern. Yes. The most southern being in Key West, Florida. West Quaddy. All right, Lisa, so you ready to head back into town? I am. I think uh, they are getting ready to close up the uh, lighthouse. It's four o'clock so we're gonna head into town into Lubeck and uh, explore that area and then probably grab some early dinner at the uh, was it the uh, what do they call it the waterfront tavern yeah that's what, that's what they said yeah it was really I, good. I heard it's a it's the place to eat if you're in Lubeck so we're gonna head back into town and grab some dinner All right, so uh, dinner at the Lubeck Brewing Company was a bust because they don't serve food. All they have is beer. And uh, this young lady here beside me, she needs some food to eat. So we're going to head off to a different location. They recommended the Inn at the Wharf. So we'll go up there and see if they've got some dinner for us. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. The adventure continues. All right, so we just finished having dinner at the Inn at the Wharf. Well, I would probably rate it probably what? Six or seven? Mm. Okay, but all right, so what's the story on that, Lisa? So the people came to visit the town of Lubeck. They fell in love with the town. And within a week, they bought the, the wharf and started the restaurant. Okay. So because they fell in love with the town. Okay. It is a pretty quaint little you know, village, fishing village, yeah, you know, typical beautiful. of of Maine and so forth. But uh, no, it's been an enjoyable day, but I think it's probably time for us to head back uh, yeah, home. Definitely time to head back. So, all right, time to get on the road. Head on hey back. guys, so that's going to wrap up today's video. Thanks for coming along with us to Lubeck, Maine and to Campobello Island. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and please give us a big thumbs up, like and subscribe. And we'll see you down the road.